an innovator of his own. He has gone the extra mile for the industry, has started a few organizations, and today we're going to talk all about it. The founder of the National Team Pinning Championship in the 1990s, he was the former American Quarter Horse Association and Payne Association, Palomino Association judge. So he's judged for all the associations. He's a former professor and coach at Colorado State University. And we all proudly know him today as the founder and president of the Cinch Ranch Sorting National Championships, Mr. Dave Wolf. Dave, it's so good to have you on the podcast here today. Well, Taylor, thanks for having me. I really enjoy these kind of things. Uh, it's a great way uh, to promote the sport and get the word out. So thanks for having me on. Oh, of course. And speaking of promoting the sport, we've got to tell everyone all about the, the National Ranch Sorting Championships. But before we do, I want to back it up just a little bit and get to know more about you and how you got started in the industry. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you all got started where you are today. Well, I, you know, I grew up in the horse industry uh, from the youth. I started out in 4-H. I went to college, uh, Lamar Community College, a couple of years in the horse training management program, and then uh, transferred to Colorado State University to finish out a bachelor degree there in equine science. Got very involved with judging uh, at the collegiate level, I've judged on the collegiate teams, and then uh, pursued the judging career. Uh, with American Quarter Horse Association, Payne Association, and Palomino Association. It was a wonderful experience. For 24 years, I got to travel all across the United States and around the world, uh, judging horse shows and meeting people in the horse industry and seeing some awesome athletes and horses in the horse industry. Uh, I enjoyed it tremendously. Oh, and, and I'm sure that you've gone the extra mile along the way. I've got to kind of back up a little bit to the collegiate judging. My cousin was fortunate enough to be a collegiate judger, and it's just given him so many opportunities in the horse industry. So what was it like for you kind of um, getting to do that, which you knowing that it was a gateway going in to be a professional judge on down the line? What was that like? It was it was special. And, you know, it takes a lot of dedication, and a lot of hard work. Uh, nobody really realizes how hard it is to uh go through that collegiate level and all those practices and given all those reasons and throughout the the career at college but um it was a special treat we got to go to the you know the world championship shows and and compete uh against all of the other colleges across the country and i really felt it was it was uh sort of beckoning me uh to pursue that part of the industry and right after college, uh, I went to work for Colorado State University in the equine science program. And then, of course, you have to be 25 before you can be, apply for a judge's application. And I got it right after that. And what a special deal. It was really awesome. Oh, I'm sure. And we were just talking off camera, the places you've gotten to go and the many, many, many miles you've been across the United States judging. I'm sure you put in a lot of hard work too, but I'm curious to know when you were going to school and getting your degree, was your end goal being a judge and a professor? And did you even think, dream up of founding these organizations or were you trying to do something else? It sounds like maybe you were going to be a vet or somewhere along there. What were your thoughts? Well, certainly uh, my first goal or my first thought uh, when growing up in youth was to become a veterinarian. And uh, I went to Oklahoma State University for a year uh, and to pursue that. And my actually my advisor at Oklahoma State University, you know, just flat asked me, what what do you want to do? And I said, well, I love riding, training horses, but I don't know that I can make a living doing that. I thought veterinary science was the best. He said, you know, there's a there's a horse training management school. Uh, and that was way back in the early 80s when they were just getting started uh, about training horses. And so I went to Lamar and then transferred on to Colorado State University. But but my instructor at Lamar, uh, there were 54 kids in the class uh, that I was in. And he said, you know, probably five of you will end up making a career in the horse industry. And he said, it's all about finding a niche, uh, what works, what fits, and something that you can dedicate yourself to and be successful. So I remember that from that day on trying to think, what will my niche be? And it started out with judging. Uh, judging was a great niche and a great opportunity for me to travel and make a living uh, in the horse industry. And it opened my eyes to all aspects of the horse industry. Obviously, with judging a quarter horse 
show, you judge everything, top to bottom, English to Western to, to cattle and uh, reining, all of it. And uh, so it was a great opportunity to learn a lot, get to know a whole lot about the horse industry and uh, uh, pursue uh, the idea of what I wanted to do. Oh, that's so well said. And one of the reasons why I would consider you an, an innovator is the fact that you took an industry that traditionally um, is harder to make money at. You learned, you know, I, making a living would be hard on your body if you were a horse trainer, things like that. And you decided to, to originally found an organization, the Team Pinning Association. But now, of course, fast forward to here we are today, you've made the national ranch sorting what it is today. Or the, yeah, the ranch sorting national championships what it is today. So what was it like going through those growing pains whenever you were trying to get things figured out? I mean, for both organizations, um, I'm sure there was so many hurdles. You mentioned you learned about judging cattle, judging what that was like. And then now that you bring the cattle into the sport, that had to have been hard too. So tell us all about that and all the growing pains that you had getting those two organizations established. You know, from the outside looking in, it seems so easy. <laughs> but from the inside, uh, it was a struggle without question. There's tons of hurdles that you have to jump. Obviously, breaking into an industry, into the equine industry with a new sport, uh, starting an association at a national level, uh, takes a lot of planning, uh, a lot of dedication and uh, commitment with without question and you get the naysayers uh it won't work it isn't going to happen you can't make it you'll never get big you'll have a little club all of that uh you go through all of that and of course the financial struggle of getting it started uh takes a lot of advertising a lot of promotion uh to get the word out on a national level and I did that uh, with the National Team Penny Championships. And, and basically, all of that derived from getting a family. Uh, I now have three boys uh, that are all grown up, you know, 30 to 22, I guess. But they were young boys, and, I, and we wanted to pursue the horse industry for them. And in my experience and all of the judging and everything, I... I what I always leaned towards was the fun side of it, not the serious competitive side of it, which is so rewarding for so many people. But I wanted my boys to have fun. And uh, whether they won or not, it was going to be fun. And when we looked at it, we looked at the the uh, sort of the rodeo industry and the roping, the team roping and that kind of thing. And uh, obviously that's a lot of fun. Uh, but we also found that uh, this sport of team pinning uh, was a was a real fun project. I wanted to focus on fun for the family, and we looked at different sports. Somebody came along and said, you know, you ought to try this team pinning. There was a team pinning down the road uh, practice, and we went to the practice, had fun. Somebody suggested that you ought to try producing a pinning or some practices. We had an arena, and we were producing ropings at the time. So we tried it and my gosh, people came out of the woodwork uh, and it got bigger and bigger. And every year we got more cattle and and it began to, began to grow. And we decided we wanted to put on a team pinning at Cheyenne Frontier Days. We live just 35 miles from Cheyenne and uh, we thought it would be a great opportunity to promote that fun sport. And so I made some connections at Cheyenne and I actually got in at the uh, Laramie County Community College in Cheyenne and said we could have the pinning there and I convinced the folks at Cheyenne Frontier Day Park that on final Sunday uh, we could do a top 10 team pinning on the racetrack right in front of the arena uh, at Cheyenne Frontier Day Park during Cheyenne Frontier Days. It was a great opportunity and I could not believe it that year that we had 1,200 teams the first year of any big production that we had ever done. And we were so excited about it. From there, we decided to start a team pinning association called National Team Pinning Championships. And <clears throat> we spread it across the United States. We became, became a sanctioning body. We wrote a set of rules, motored all across the United States, and it grew and it became a very successful organization. Oh, yes, without a doubt. And to have that big, huge start at Cheyenne, the daddy of them all, 
what an iconic um, story there. And so I'm curious, naturally, you wanted to move to another organization, create a more opportunity and maybe a sport where people didn't have to grow up in the industry to learn the sport and have appreciation for the sport. And so that's probably how the ranch sorting national championship came about. Um, what was the ranch sorting aspect? Talk us through there, how, how you branched off from the team pinning association. So during the team pinning, you know, we tried to grow it at a national level and, and it was, became very successful, the largest team pinning association in the United States, but we seemed to run into barriers and uh, we got to about 5,000 members. And after that, uh, we didn't continue to grow to get new members like we had hoped. Uh, and we and so we sort of sat back and looked at it and said, what are the barriers? Uh, and the barriers seemed to be that the cattlemen uh, be, were concerned about running the cattle up and down the arena. Um, obviously, it became harder to get cattle for those kind of events. Uh, that was a concern. And, and number two, you know, the majority of the folks in it, uh, as they got started, uh, were novice riders on cattle that they hadn't experienced working cattle before. And so the, it gets out of control. <laughs> A full arena, 200, 150 by 300 foot arena uh, with two or three riders in there and 30 head of cattle. Uh, it takes some talent. Uh, it takes some success. It takes some cattlemen. Uh, to be able to manage those cattle and in a in a successful way, and the horsemen sort of looked at it like, you know, are these novice riders just riding on cattle? And so that became a barrier that that you know the equine industry was was sort of bumping up against on the sport of team pinning. Now I love team pinning, and there's a lot of folks out there that love team pinning, and as you become experienced in it, it's a wonderful game. But the break-in part is sort of tough. And so we looked at it and said, well, let's, let's control the game a little bit more, confine it uh, into a round pen, and we're just going to sort cattle. Uh, instead of taking them down the arena and putting them in a pen, we're just going to learn to sort cattle. And so we set up two round pens, and we put a 12-foot opening between them. We put 10 head of cattle on one side and two riders, and you just went in and sorted cattle out in numerical order. And we started that alongside of our team pinning association, and we called it ranch sorting, and it began to grow. It began to get bigger and more interest in it, and the new riders in the sport loved it because if they missed a cow, all they had to do was turn around, and they were right back in action on that cow. He didn't run down the arena on it. Uh, so very, very exciting, and it began to grow. So I founded Ranch Sorting National Championships alongside of NTPC, National Team Pinning Championships. I was the founder of both. I was the president of both. I had investors in both. And uh, the Ranch Sorting got bigger and bigger. At one point, it was sort of became a uh, conflict of interest for me to run both associations. And uh, obviously, didn't have the time to do it all. And so I sold my share in national team pinning championships uh, and took over the share that the shareholders had in RSNC uh, and went forward with the Ranch Sorting National Championships. And from there on, my gosh, the sport has exploded. Oh, without a doubt. And it's so cool for me to sit here and hear this story. So I hope everyone out there listening is taking some, it all in too to hear from the horse's mouth, exactly what happened. Um, that's just so, so incredible. And so I'm, I'm curious, I know that you're always thinking about um, bettering the sport, bettering the future, bettering the future generations even. So I'm curious to ask you, what do you think or where do you see the future of the sport growing? You know, I, I, truthfully, we're just beginning. Uh, this sport is such a perfect opportunity for so many people to get involved in the Western industry, especially the Western industry on cattle, because it is a confined area. And we even have a Western heritage class where you don't get out of a trot. You do the whole class, your whole run at a trot, a walk or a trot. And so, so many people can get involved in the sport. You don't have to go and take a ton of lessons. You don't have to have a special horse. Uh, if you can control your horse, you can ramp sort at the beginning and novice levels and be very successful. 
and we have a numbered rating system from a one to a nine. And number one is grandma on a trail horse. Truthfully, that's what we tell people. If you're if you're not grandma on a trail horse, uh, you're beyond the number one spot. We want everybody to get involved in our sport uh, at a basic level, and we save that spot. When you win three checks in our sport, you graduate to a number two rookie. And when you win $1,000, you graduate to a number three novice. Uh, so lots of opportunity at the, at the introductory level for this sport, like no other cow horse sport there is. Uh, and that's why this sport is going to get tremendously large. Yes, that is so awesome that you offer, offer those opportunities. A lot of the biggest misconceptions with the horse industry is that you have to start with a background, start with the knowledge, start with the money, start with the expensive horses. So I love everything that you guys are doing to allow anyone to come in, learn the, to, the, to love the sport and respect the horses and learn the correct way. And then even have the incentive of being able to grow and bet, can become better and get better and better and better. And who knows, there's probably some pros out there that started as an novices, you know, that, um, just got, got bit by the bug and loved it. Absolutely. <laughs> Actually, uh, our office manager, Tanner Spurl, uh, right here in our office, uh, I gave him his first clinic in Evergreen, Colorado. Oh, six years ago. Uh, and this guy, he couldn't hardly turn around. He had a great big old trail horse that was 15, three and couldn't get it done. And I get, I remember to this day, that first lesson I gave him, and he said, I love this game. I got to get better. And he has progressed. He came to work for us. Uh, he's now won over $100,000 in the sport and is one of our top riders in the industry. And it's so exciting to watch people mature from the beginning level all the way to the professional level in our sport. It's a lot of fun to watch that. That gives me so much hope for the future. So everything that you have going is so good. And, and what an incredible story. I know there's several stories out there like that. So well done on your guys's end, but we've got to get to the excitement. This week is the, the biggest week of the year for you guys. Uh, June 10th through the 17th is going to be all things Ranch Sorting National Championship. Tell us about what we can expect, what's going on, where it's at. Tell us all the details. What a what a wonderful experience it will be if if you get a chance to come, whether you're a competitor or not. Uh, obviously, there's no uh, ticket sales or anything like that. You can come to the John Justin Arena uh, in beautiful Fort Worth and Will Rogers Memorial Center, one of the epic places for horse events. Uh, and we are there for eight days straight. Ranch sorting is all we do, and we have a lot of fun. We have a maturity uh, for our Three and four-year-old horses. We have a pro rider class for our upper level riders. And then we have a whole array of other classes for all different levels of contestants. Even the brand new beginner that's never won three checks in the sport and is a very green novice rider and never worked on cattle. We have a class for them at our world finals. In fact, that class will have over uh, 400 teams in it. It's, it's amazing. Brand new people coming every year to our sport. But uh, we have seven different sorting pins running in the two main arenas there at Will Rogers Memorial Center all day long for, for seven days. And uh, it's exciting. It's, it's, it's unbelievable to see, you know, you call it a three ring circus. We call it a seven ring circus. People going from one ring to the other and one class to the other all week long. We have great organization. We have over 100 people on staff for that event. And uh, we have a potluck dinner. We have a, we have a horse sale there. Uh, Horseman's Choice has a horse sale there uh, for cow horses and ranch sorting horses. And uh, it's just a wonderful time. Uh, and it's, the, it's a party for the sport of ranch sorting. Oh, without a doubt. I know I'm looking forward to going to check it out. Anyone out there who's interested, feel free to follow along. I'm sure you guys have social media, right? Oh, absolutely. We have a lot of great connections, but you know, what's amazing to most people is the numbers that we pull from that world finals. Last year, we had over 8,700 teams at our world finals, paid out close to a million dollars. And uh, man, the, the growth of this sport, people coming from California to Florida to all over for that event. Uh, we could top 9,000 teams this year. My goal is 10,000 teams. Obviously, just to say we did it. <laughs> 
Oh yeah. That's a really good goal. And it brings me to a really good question. I love what you said earlier, all the different options. Do the members have to qualify for the national championships or this is a clean slate kind of championship? A new member, a beginner does not have to qualify, but all other members have to have competed in five sanctioned events sometime during the year across the United States. We have about 450 sanctioned events across the United States each year. Wow. Okay. So see lots of opportunity to get involved. Anyone out there who's a, a horse hobbyist, um, maybe has a trail riding horse that wants to get started and see if, the, if their horse is even cowy at all. I feel like this would be the best and perfect, most perfect opportunity. So well done for what you guys have going on over there, Dave. Congratulations on all of it. I feel like I'm in the conversation with a legend here. You're, you're paving the way in the industry and making opportunity for people out there. So thank you for everything you do. Um, if you guys are curious to follow along with the schedule, maybe you can't make it to the championships, but you want to get the chance to go to another event throughout the year, you can go to www.rsnc.us and figure out their schedules, everything they have going on. Um, of course, follow along on social media. This will be a huge event to look forward to. Dave, thank you for your time and thank you for everything that you've done for all the organizations, but especially the Ranch Sorting National Championship. Well, Taylor, 